Greetings. This is Sister Rebecca, aka Hollyhood. So many of you have hit me up on Twitter with emails and um, direct messages and on my Facebook and just um, calling me on the phone and saying, well, how do I not sell my soul? Okay, here it is. I'm going to give you a, a 10 point, a 10 step uh, point agenda that if you follow it, I guarantee you won't get caught in the mix. Um, the, this is implying to those of you who are trying to get in the game, those of you who are already in the game, and those of you who maybe left the game because you felt that you were getting too close to selling your soul. So there is a way you can do this without going out like a sucker because those who are selling their souls are definitely, that's, that's what it is. It is what it is and they find out only when it's too late. So pay attention. I'm going to play first a, a a song video uh, by a friend of mine who actually did not sell his soul and he's very successful although many of you probably have not heard of him his name is Claude Boss and this song is how uh, not to lose your soul and um, you'll see he's a very talented brother but more, greater than that a lot of people don't realize that success does not always equal fame so the fact that you haven't heard from him does not mean that he is not successful and making money there are many people who make money that you'll never hear about um, and that's part of the manipulation of the game is to make people think that money is the key to fame no money's not the key to fame the key to fame is being able to live survive and have peace of mind when you can have everything and be content and be happy with yourself and your surroundings and know that you um, then are truly successful so pay attention and after following his video clip I'm going to give you my 10 step program to not selling your soul. Yeah, be careful about the kind of music you listen to because there are so many evil forces out there that whisper evil ideas into your ears. Yeah, 
careful about the kind of music you listen to because there are so many evil forces out there that whisper evil ideas into your ears that could make you go insane about fortune and fame. Don't sell your soul to the devil. Okay. I'm going to stop right here. Thanks, Claude. That was great. I couldn't have said it better. These are my 10 steps. Um, get a pen if you need one. I'll give you a minute. And um, these are the 10 steps that you need to follow in order to not sell your soul in this game. Number one, you got to know who you are. If you know who you are, it'll be very hard for people or money or fame or even the world to influence you because you'll know who you are and you'll pretty much do what it is that you need to do to get where you are going without letting people convince you that uh, any other way or method is good. So you'll follow your own mind and you'll do your own thing. And that's the only way that it works. Um, with a positive ending. And number two, know whose you are. If you are truly a child of God, then you won't put anything above the most high. You'll always look to the hills from whence cometh your health, and you will love the Lord, and you will consult with him regarding your decisions that you make in life, and you will follow what is right instead of what's wrong. We are all given discernment, especially when we when we truly choose to do the right thing in this world. Uh, we are given the power of discernment, so we know the difference between right and wrong. And once you know that, and you have chosen to take the right path, you won't go along the wrong path. Uh, going along the wrong path brings me to number three, don't take oaths. When you take an oath, you enter into a covenant with a person or a thing, and you are bound to it. And some oaths cannot be broken. This is why there are some gangs that the people, um, once you join, you cannot get out of. And you've got 50, 60 year old people who still claim their sets because they are whatever for life. And so you want to be real careful with that because as you age, sometimes you decide that, you know what, this is not what I, I'm about anymore. And you don't have that option when you take an oath. And oaths include um, pinky swearing and blood oaths, especially when you're um, taking the blood of another person and you and you slice your finger and you and you do the blood brother thing with their with the other person's finger and you mix the blood. These are all things that have spiritual connotations and they link you in a soul tie with the person or the thing that you have made the oath to. So you want to be careful with that. You also don't want to swear on anything other than the truth, God's honest truth. And, and you don't want to swear on it. So many people says, you know, they'll tell you something knowing it's a lie from the pit of hell. And they say, oh, I swear to God. And that's blasphemy. And, and even if it's not a lie, it's blasphemy. You don't have to swear to God. If you are a truth teller, you don't have to swear to anything. You can just say, listen, this is what it is and this is how it is. I don't swear that I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth and you can take it or you can leave it. But it is my hope and my prayer that you will take it. Number four, do not participate in any rituals. And rituals can be anything, it's just something that you do on a weekly or a daily basis that you know is not of God. There are people who gather together on a uh, regular basis to play video games with their friends and, and to smoke weed and get high. And they do this all day, every day. And some of them only do it on the weekends. And it's, it becomes a ritual. And during that ritual, sometimes things are introduced into the ritual that are not of God. They're evil and you become acclimated to this almost to the point where you become numb to it. P uh, point in fact is um, there are a lot of video games that are extremely violent that glorify killing and murdering and a lot of people, especially young people, have now become numb to the concept of murder and killing people because they do this on a regular basis. It has become a ritual for them. Obviously, there are other deeper rituals where you actually go somewhere and participate in some type of sexual uh, ritual. There are also killing rituals. And I, as you know, I've mentioned sacrificial um, rites of passage that uh, people go through to become parts of things. And that starts at the lower level. Once you have already indoctrinated yourself to accept rituals um, as you 
go on in life, it doesn't become a surprise to you. I cannot tell you the things that I participated in when I was in this demonic music industry. We used to have clubs called Hellfire and Plato's Retreat where everybody's uh, sleeping with everybody and all types of sexual debauchery. And this was ritual and it got me conditioned and used to allowing people to use my body. You don't want to get that mindset. It's a very, very, very hard stronghold to break. And I thank God for deliverance, but trust and believe you don't want to go there. And speaking of sexual rituals, number five, avoid sex with strangers or group sex with men and women. When you allow yourself to get into compromising situations, especially with people you don't know, you don't know what that person's spirit is. And this is why in the first Corinthians in the Bible, it speaks about fornication and that when you lie down with people and you allow someone's spirit into you then that spirit whether it's a good one or a bad one it becomes a part of you why do you think there are people that were in your life who you absolutely not cannot stand today but you still think about them and you miss them because you had a sexual soul tie to them and there are so many and this is what um, today's youth call getting whipped and and um and uh, there was even a song written about it by t-pain called i'm sprung and it's all the same thing. You lie down with dogs, you're going to wake up with fleas. It's a no-brainer. Okay, number six, do not worship money or any material thing for that matter. Um, once you begin to worship money and make money your God, you open yourself up to doing anything to get it. I know. When I was in the game, I used to hustle hard body. My theme song was Cassidy's I'm a Hustler, Ask About Me. And when you have that mentality, you pretty much will do whatever it takes to get that cake. So you don't want to have that mentality because it controls you and it controls your mind and it takes away any righteousness that you might have had because you put what? Money first. Money becomes your God. You cannot serve two masters. You can either serve God or you can serve money, but you can't serve both. Number seven, you want to be careful of the company that you keep. And this should be a no-brainer, but it's not because a lot of people get caught up into the way a person looks or the money that they have or the lifestyle that they're living. And this could be the most despicable person on the planet, but you want to be with them and hang with them because they're a boss in your eyes. And money and power and influence does not make people, this, all it does is allow these people to manipulate you. So, and if you've read my book on manipulation, you know exactly what I'm talking about. People use those things so that they can manipulate others. When I was in the game, I cannot tell you how many men that I met who told me that they got in the game solely for the purpose of bagging as many women as they could or men for that matter. So you want to be real careful, you know, with um, being attracted to a person because of what they have and hanging out with someone who goes against all your moral values. Remember, the water cannot be both dirty and clean. It's either clean or it's dirty, but it can't be both. Number eight, you want to avoid drugs and alcohol because both of these things have the capability to alter your personality and open you up to demons. Why do you think they call alcohol spirits? Because that's what's unleashed when you drink it. I've known people who were the nicest people in the world until they started drinking. And then this demon appears from the bottle and they're totally different. They want to cut you. They want to fight. You know, it's it's a whole nother ball game. So you want to be really careful with that. And I know this is the weed generation, but let me tell you, weed is not like it used to be back in the day. Now it's doctored, it's chemical. You've got people, it's almost as bad. Back in the day, we had something called angel dust and there were people jumping off roofs because they couldn't handle it. You don't want to put things... What's wrong with being natural? If you're a good artist and you make dope beats and you've got flow, the weed or the alcohol is not going to make you any better. As a matter of fact, it might mess up your flow. And, and how do you think um, artists get on stage and they forget their lyrics? Because the weed has eaten up half of their brain cells. And the same with alcohol. No one wants to come and see a drunk perform. That's not entertainment. This was what, bless the dead, Amy Winehouse, towards the end of her life, uh, she was showing up at shows and she was drunk and slurring and, and people weren't buying it. No one wants to pay a 50 to to $100 for a ticket to see a drunk or a crackhead for that matter. And we won't even talk about the crackheads that go out there and have gone out on stage 
and couldn't do uh, what they were paid to do because of the drugs in their system. And the same with weed. When I used to smoke weed, all I wanted to do was smoke, eat, and have sex. That's not a life. Days, weeks, months went by when things weren't getting done in my life and I'd wake up broke or somewhere that I didn't know how I got there. This is not cool and it's not the answer and it's one of the ways that you can get caught out there with your soul missing. You can wake up somewhere and you have no soul because the people that you partied with and trusted have taken it during your absence. The enemy can only attack the camp when it is asleep and when you're high out of your mind, you might as well be asleep. Okay, number nine, do not be conceited or self-absorbed or caught up in the outer appearance of things and people. So many of us are now, um, and I won't say us because I'm not a part of it, but I used to be. I used to always look for the cutest guy and the nicest smile and, you know, different things that made me think the person was the ideal person. No, not at all. Remember, Satan... It is said in the Bible that Satan was the most beautiful angel. There are a lot of people who have physical beauty and inside is a demon. It's a demon that plots and, 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 and is planning to destroy you. That's the whole point of its existence is to seek, kill and destroy. Satan enters into people and he, he uses them and these people allow themselves to be used to recruit other people and either they recruit you or they kill you. There's no friendship in Satan. There's no friendship with evil when you find an evil person trust and believe they're not your friend you may think oh I, I heard a lady say once oh my husband's mean to everybody but not to me trust and believe baby your time is coming a mean person is a mean person and it doesn't matter that you're not experiencing it at the onset you will experience it as time goes on because they cannot hide and conceal that nature for long eventually it has to come to the surface and it will Number 10, and last of all, is love the Lord. Love the Most High. If you don't pray, start praying because you're entering into a game that is filled with demons. Um, most of the higher end people that I dealt with in the business, most of the people who wrote me the biggest checks during my time in hip hop were one step removed from me dealing directly with the devil. Um, I heard a mafia um, boss on um, on a television show once. He had um, he had turned his life around, but he had been in the game forever. And he said that he had encountered his fellow mafioso, and sometimes when he would. Uh, greet them he just could see the cold deadness in their eyes and it was like dealing with the dead so you know if you don't have any type of light in your soul then you have a house for the dead and you will welcome death into your soul and into your life you want to get that light and the only way you can get that light is through a knowledge of God. You have to accept and know that there is a God, that he is watching over you, that he does love you and that he does want the best for you. And the riches and, and the things of this world, those are not the things of heaven. You know, this world is a, a delusion. It's, it's made to fool and trick people. These people who are high up today, they don't even know that their, their time to fall is coming. There's going to come a day when you're going to see Jay-Z and Beyonce and Rihanna and Kanye and Katy Perry and all of these Hollywood people um, um, who are out there with all this money and success, and they're going to be walking the streets just like you, wondering what has happened to the earth, what has happened to the world, and they're going to be running for their lives and screaming when the fires of hell rise up to claim them. And their money is not going to save them. When you're sick in the hospital and those IV tubes are on you, your money cannot save you. When, when you catch that uh, monster from all those women or all those men that you've slept with, your money can't save you. All the money in the world can't sa save you. Only the most high God can save you. If you want to avoid the pitfalls of this hellish world, you have got to know God. And so many people now are denying the existence of God and they don't want to hear it. But I guarantee you, they'll be the first to cry at the end times. Oh God, oh God, help me. As always, I want to end with prayer. Father God, I ask you to let the listener see 
the message that has been presented today and understand and know that these uh, videos are not for my glory, Father God, because the glory is all yours. These videos are simply, I am the vessel and I simply am being used by you to enlighten the people. For however long I have, Father God, I will continue to do thy mission and thy will. Father God, you know that I am preparing my television show with Professor Griff and we plan to get our message out there to the millions and the masses. And I ask you to not let the Hollywood corporate machine try to interfere with our message through their satanic advertising that I'm sure they're gonna to try to slip in in between my shows and through their um, influence because they will. it will not work. We will not be moved and we will not be influence. This is why I chose a strong brother like Griff to be beside me because besides any queen, there must be a king. We have to do this and we will do this and people will know the truth. Stay tuned. Um, Professor Griff and I will be uh, June 15th in Harlem filming the first episode of our um, of Magic Bullet, which is a television show that we're doing, and we're going to be discussing Hip Hop Illuminati. And we're going to be answering questions from the audience, and it's going to be fun. Um, we have invited some other 